What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Austin Chapline and today I'm excited to show you guys my first song that I've ever released on Spotify. It just came out this past week. It's called Drive Slow featuring Spence Brown. He's going to be in this video. He helped me write and produce this track, so let's get into it. But before you do that, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. So to start this instrumental, I came up with this drum pattern right here. Just programmed some drums in Ableton. And here's what this little drum loop sounded like. And so after I laid those down, I sent these stems over to Spence. So yeah, Spence, take over from here. All right, Spence Brown here. And I'm gonna show you guys how I did all of the instrumentation for Drive Slow. The first thing that I started off with were these chords out of my Reface DX. It's a patch that I found called Neo Roads, and they sound like this. super simple and what's cool about the reface is that not only does it have five pin MIDI out but it also has USB MIDI out so I can record the audio out of this and at the same time grab the MIDI and put it into a VST so what I did then is I took those chords and put them through the plugin addictive keys and I ran them through echo boy with custom patch that I designed, which you basically turn the mix all the way up and then the echo time all the way down, except in this one, I have the echo time on one side up so that it does kind of a Haas effect and widens widens the sound. And what it ends up doing is making it sound very chorusy and really, really cool. So I'll let you listen to that real quick on its own. So it's got a lot of character. It sounds almost vintage, you know, so it fits in well with the uh, vibe of this song. So the next thing I added was this piano melody that sounds like this. Which just kind of sits in kind of behind everything. It's just a nice little addition. So then the next thing that I added were these little other Neo Rhodes chords that just kind of sit behind everything else that kind of accentuate what the main ones are doing and they sound like this. And you can hear them in the mix, they just kind of sit behind everything. And all this is running through a stack that has RC20 on it with again, a preset that I designed that's supposed to kind of just give it a little bit of that retro feel. And the reverb in RC20 is great. And I'm sure if you're a producer, you've heard of RC20, you know, who am I kidding? It's 2021, everybody's heard of this plugin at this point. So the next thing that I added was this pad, which is a patch called Flangle Pad. <laughs> they all have really weird names. These chords are super simple. They just go like this. The Arturia Chorus June 6, which is great. It's supposed to emulate the chorus on the Juno. It's got a whole bunch of different settings you can play with on it. And it's becoming one of my favorite chorus plugins right now, actually. Can't go wrong with just setting it to one or two or both. So yeah, I just have it set to one. Running through that RC20 stack again. So we got most of the stuff out of the DX. The only thing left to do is this little flute part. Uh, that's it. That just happens at the end of every eight bars. So we're at the end of what I've done out of my little Reface DX here. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys some of the other things that I did on the electric guitar and the bass. So next thing I added are guitar chords in the back that just go like this. Next thing I added was just this melody that sits on the back on the guitar, which is just one note. It just goes like. The 
last thing I added on guitar was this melody that goes like this. And that does it for what I did on the guitar. So next we're gonna hop over to the bass. Big on simplicity in this one. Uh, the bass line is super simple. It just goes like this. And I have this bass running through console and through the Ampeg SVTR Classic on the unison preamp and then through an LA-2A. And then when it gets into Logic, I have it running through one decapitator, then our bass, and then another decapitator with the mix turned to about, I don't know, maybe 20%, just to give it some oomph and some nice saturation. All right, so the last thing that I did was actually where the song's name comes from. And I was just kind of messing around doing mm -hmm, da 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 uh, on the track, and I was just kind of doing laws and dies and humming, and Austin was like, well, what if you say like something like drive slow? And I was like, okay, I'll try that out. And if you listen, it actually, the phrase begins on slow, but that's because at the end, it loops back around into drive slow. So it's just like, drive slow, da-da-da-da-da, mm hmm Oh, drive slow. And so I got lazy. Instead of doing harmonies on this, I just ran it through Little Alter Boy. And I've got it set to be five semitones up and 50% mix. And that is where you get the nice. From. So I think that should about do it for me over here. I'm gonna hand it back over to Austin. I hope I went over plugins and patches well enough for you guys. Anyways, I'm gonna hand it back over to Austin, so peace. Once I got this track back from Spence, I knew I just needed to add a couple more sounds to it and then arrange it and mix it. So the first two sounds that I added were some transition elements. So I added this crash and this riser. After that, I just wanted one more just giant swooping noise when that crash hit. So I added this little effect sound underneath of it. The only thing it needed after that was some sort of noise, some sort of texture, whether it would have been like rain, bird sounds, whatever. It just needed an environment. So I just picked fireplace effects because a lot of times it just has a little bit different feel to vinyl, but it still adds a similar characteristic. So I just added a little bit of this. And so that just really helps add to that lo-fi sound. Once these sounds were in there, it was time to mix everything and arrange it. So mix-wise, if I go down this, you'll see there's nothing on the kick. There's Nothing on the snare on the hi-hats. It's just me cutting out 140. Really on all the sounds, I just cut out, other than of course the kick and the bass, I cut out about 140 hertz. And that was just to get rid of excess low end. Like everything else has pretty much no effects on it. And then if I go down here to the vocals. Okay, so I did add one effect right here. So that was to this sound right here. I added Pancake. And this is a great plugin. You can get it from Splice as your free plugin option. So this added some movement. So I'll let you hear what this sounds like. So you can you can visually see what it's doing there, but basically just shifting it to the sides because there was a lot of different melodies playing in this beat <laughs> throughout. So sometimes you want to just pan some stuff out there just to get a little bit more excitement going on. So 
As far as vocals go, I grouped them together and they definitely need a little more reverb. And so I added this Valhalla. This is like one of the best ones to use, in my opinion, for vocals. And then same thing here, a little bit of a cut of lows out of this and then some compression. And then I also just took the end of the word here. This is one of my favorite things to do with delay throws. And so I just copied the same compression and EQ and then just added this Echo Boy quarter note delay so that just makes that slow at the end of the chorus just ring out with the echo So as you can hear, that echo at the end especially, that makes a huge difference. But these stems that I got back from Spence already sounded really good. And a lot of times when you're mixing instrumentals from producers, like if they know how to mix, like it's already going to, they're going to get it the way you want it to sound. So you really don't have to do that much. You don't want to reinvent anything. You just want to add small things to enhance it. So if I go down the rest of it, this is going to be another cut at 140. But the riser, okay, the riser doesn't even have it on there. So yeah, the effects thing has it on there. Basically, I just cut out a little bit of low end on it and then just leveled things to taste. So here's my master chain. I had a soft clipper that just catches any peaks that poke out. I'm not driving it too hard. Some mixes I'll, I will drive it hard, but this one, it wasn't doing that. And then after that, I added this J37 tape machine from Waves. This is a really good one to use, but I don't want to open it right now because it's been crashing my computer today. But basically, it's just adding some harmonics and some saturation. And so after that, I had this EQ just cutting out 25 hertz, cutting out 100 on the sides. This is a key frequency here to note 140 to 160 hertz. A lot of times just has some mud that... You just do a little cut on your master. Don't get too carried away with it, but a little bit you can open up and clear up your mix just slightly. So that's a pretty common frequency that you'd see on my uh, master bus, like a slight cut there. And then there's a lot of mid-range stuff going on in this song. So I cut out minus three on it and then added 3 dB to 10K because that's just what sounded good on this. And so after that, added a small bit of compression. I'll let you guys hear it bypassed in and out, but it's a small difference. But the key here is the side chain function is enabled. So basically it's not engaging at all with anything below 100 Hertz. So it's leaving that low end stuff that I really like that everybody likes, just leaving that alone. So anything basically that's not coming out of my sub, it's allowed to touch. So here's what that sounds like. So super subtle, you might be able to hear a little bit of a difference in the tone of the mix with the bypass in and out, but that's the whole point of this kind of compression. You don't want it to drastically change stuff. You're just adding a little bit to it. You're gluing it together a little bit. You're adding a little bit of tone. It should be very subtle. So after that, I added another soft clipper. And then last but not least, I love to use this Clang Helm plugin at the end of mixes. You can get carried away with it, but I like to use it to just sometimes open up the mix. So sometimes I might duck down a little bit of the mid range frequency or the mid, excuse me, and then add a little bit of side. And sometimes I'll just add a little more side because I like how the mid, the mid feels in the mix. So on this one, I ended up just boosting a dB on the side. A lot of times you want to be <laughs> subtle on it. And so the only other thing that I added that isn't engaged because it was going to crash my computer during the screen recording was this Fab Filter Pro L2 limiter. So for this one, it just needed to be gained up another 6 dB. And then here's my attack release channel link settings for this. And this preset is really the main thing that I mess with a lot. Um, and the oversampling, you definitely want to play with that on here for sure. But the presets, a lot of times I like to use transparent, dynamic, or modern. But for this one, 
all around sounded the best on it. So that's the one that I ended up using. But that's how I ended up, quote unquote, mastering this. It's not like I needed to push it that hard. It was just an instrumental for Spotify. But it definitely got it up there to a nice, pleasant listening level. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't yet, be sure to click the link in the description to listen to Drive Slow and follow me on Spotify. Definitely going to be doing a lot more types of these kind of beats on there, but also just maybe even some heavy sounding beats on there as well. But go ahead and give it a follow. If you haven't yet, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And we'll see you next time.